Hey everyone, it's Chris with Illinois Agriculture in the Classroom. Whether you've seen my previous videos or if you're a newbie, see what I did there? You're in the right place. Welcome to Bee School. To be honest, we had planned a very different video for you today. One of my goals with making these bee school videos was to try to inspire people to take up an interest in beekeeping. And actually my seven year old son watched the first two videos and decided that he wanted to start to keep bees and so we agreed to get a third hive to allow him to, to have his own bees to try to learn how to be a beekeeper this year as well. Well, we started filming yesterday to show his new hive and lo and behold, all the bees are gone. And uh, it's, it's been very disheartening. Uh, it evidently happens. It's never happened to me before, but evidently sometimes when you put in a new package of bees, for whatever reason, they don't like the home you gave them and they leave. And so uh, within four days of putting them in here, once that queen got out of the cage, all the bees left. And so it's been a really hard lesson to learn. You're probably asking yourself, Chris, why didn't you just take the $135 that you used to buy these bees and just burn it? And yes, that would have actually been a lot easier if we had done that, but we've learned some valuable lessons. And I'd like to think that, that we're better people because of it. At least that's what I tell myself as I lie awake in the middle of the night, wondering how on earth I lost 10,000 bees within, within three days. But that's besides the point. I promised you today that I would show you the parts of a beehive and I have an empty beehive sitting here now, so it's gonna be very easy for me to show you all the different components that make up a beehive. We'll start at the front of the beehive. So this is the bottom board, and so this is a landing area for the bees to get into the hive. We use screen bottom boards, I'll show you here. So the underside of this is screen and open year round, all the time. Um, there's a number of reasons why you would do that. Partly is for ventilation. It also helps with an insect pest of bees called a varroa mite, that once they get knocked off the bees, they fall through and they can't get back into the hive. So I've been really happy using these vented bottom boards. This is an entrance reducer. So when a hive is small, uh, you would want a small entrance because they have to guard this entrance. And so you'd keep that small entrance. As the hive gets bigger, you can move this. And I can turn it and have a bigger entrance and then as they're full I can just open it up completely and then they would have uh, easy access to get you know tens of thousands of bees in and out of there every single day. This is called a deep hive body and uh, typically when you set up hives you're going to have two deeps is going to be the brood area so this is where the queen is going to lay the eggs and they're going to rear their young. Anything above those two hives is going to be supers. And so I use medium supers. And so they're shorter than the deeps. And that is where the actual honey that I would potentially take is located. So this is a deep hive body. This is the outer cover. See, we have a rock on top to keep it from blowing away. So the inner cover comes off. Or sorry, the outer cover comes off. And then this is the inner cover. You can take that off. And then here, I don't have this full of frames um, because we just put a new package in here and some of them I didn't fill them up yet. So these are called frames. So this is a 10 frame hive. So 10 frames would fit in here. You can also find eight frame hives that are a little bit smaller. One disadvantage to uh, these deep hive bodies is that they are extremely heavy when they're full of honey and, and, and bees and everything. And so they get, it gets very hard to handle. And so some people use um, smaller high bodies because it's a little bit easier on their back. So these are frames. These are wood frames with plastic uh, foundation. And this, this foundation has been coated with beeswax to make it a little bit more attractive to the bees to get them to start pulling out some honeycomb. You can see this is where I had the queen cage attached and the bees did actually start pulling out some comb but they didn't do very much of it and then they, they left. So I choose to use black foundation because it's a lot easier. As you can see, if you look into these, it's a lot easier to see what's going on inside those cells with that black background. So you can see the eggs and the larva and all those different things a lot easier with black foundation. So these are the frames. This is a sugar syrup feeder. So you can see it is still full of syrup because the bees didn't, weren't in here long enough to really take advantage of that at all. So if I were going to add another hive body, I would literally, once this is full, I would literally stack another one on top and then keep stacking them up 
uh, as long as the bees kept filling them up with honey. All right, those are the basic parts of a beehive. Uh, next week, we'll get into uh, one of our other hives that still has bees in them, and we'll give you a, an idea of what's going on in those hives.